You're tuning in to the Anigas Review, Idolmaster KR, Episode 21. We are your hosts, Drake Chandler. And Kai Hall. And this just in, breaking news, Sua Lee is a really dumb bitch. Kai, <laughs> what do you have to say about this unexpected development? Words cannot describe how stupid she is. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you something. Someone told me that, hey, you're going to die if you don't get this right now, and you can wait to do what I wanted to do, I would just wait. I'm not dying over that. But, that being said, I did tell Drake this too. It is the music industry, specifically the idol industry, and both, both said industries are very unforgiving once you go away. It's really hard to make a comeback in that. And <laughs> so where she's coming from is not I like you under I understand it, but at the same time, as like a personal thing, it's just like you think you would care more about yourself than actually what she was doing, but apparently that was not the case. She valued her career more, more than, than she her. did her own life. Yeah. I can't s I can't I can't say that I would. I'm I'm not I can't I can't say that I would. If if I, if I, my, my career that I'm going to is in, biz, in business management. If I'm sick or am I dying, I'm going to, I'm going to focus on myself and not my career. My career will always be there, especially once I got better. <laughs> right. So, so, like, here, so yeah. Okay. Like, no, no yeah. I, I'm just saying like, like the choice of her choosing to actually like work and like, you know, she she essentially killed herself in a way, right? Like she she was so focused on uh, just doing what she wanted to do, and like I said, it's the music industry and it's very very unforgiving. So I understood why she chose those actions, but if it was just me, no, God no. Right. So, uh, it because it, it it had been a long time mystery for us. To try to figure out what all of this was, what all this was going on, what this truth was that Shin Hyuk was hiding, right? And it was this disease with long name that I'm not going to try to pronounce, <laughs> but basically the conditions of it were that if too much fluid travels to your brain, it could kill you. Yeah. And I know it's a real thing because it was not related to her by blood, but the but my grandmother who was the adopted mom of my dad had the same condition. She died from too much fluid oh. actually going to her brain. I know that. The true story. Oh, uh, wait. I want to go on record hmm. and save this. Suji actually did get up too fast. Canon. <laughs> we'll touch on that in a minute. <laughs> so, so, nonetheless, yes. So, the reason why Sua ran away, the reason why she was so desperate to try to race oncoming traffic and get hit by this truck was because she was even more afraid of getting a surgery that was not disclosed very well but implied that may leave her unable to perform well see the thing is i i assumed when they said that right because it's like it's going to be like this tube maybe like this is the pen it may be like where my finger. I don't is know what these tubes here. look like. Well, they're they're yeah. like they're really tiny. Cause I did look at it. They're like they're like really tiny, but pretty much they just keep the fluids in your brain in check. Mm -hmm. And she would have to go bald, and she would have to recover. But they implied that she wouldn't be able to sing again, which I don't understand because when I looked up the when I looked up uh, people who recover from the surgery, they're perfectly fine afterwards. I mean, they gotta let their hair grow out. But, I mean, she could just easily wear a wig and perform and no one would say anything. I mean, technically speaking, she already does. True. Because that's not Suji Lee's real hair. <laughs> yeah, all right, like, true, true. I, I mean, like, there, there's a little bit that they that they could have done there. But, like, you know, like, for the story's sake of life. You think they've done some of the, is it some exaggeration? Yeah, on the conditions yeah, of yeah, this? yeah. Right, because, like, you know, like, when I, like, I understand it's, like, you know, TV drama. And they want to, like, get your attention or whatever. So, 
Yeah, like I said, I could see where they're coming from, but not necessarily. Like, when you look it up, you're just kind of like, ah, oh, this actually kind of doesn't happen. So, like, I kind of don't understand why they, they were telling her she wouldn't, she couldn't perform again unless, like, she had to wait a couple months, which is understandable. But at the same time, like... Well, it, she, it may... couldn't, she couldn't wait a couple of months because her biggest concert ever yeah, like, was in a month. Like, in, if, any, if anything, it really made Sua seem super selfish and like not only it just it really did she was just really really selfish and like, yeah and it's and i still think it fell in line even with even what little we knew about her character because she was always <sighs> at first when we first met her based on like you know suji's opinion of her it seemed like she was just kind of like the realist but now she kind of, like, jumped beyond that and went to, like, straight up just, like, the pessimist. Yeah, and, no, like, like I didn't really it, have much of an opinion on, like, Right, Sua. when it started, when she was, like, the Red Riding Hood metaphors yeah. and stuff like that. But it's, like, this episode, when, when Suji's like, man, these city lights are so beautiful. And she's like, but lights always go out. And I'm like, can you not <laughs> yeah, like, be so like, edgy, please? Like, it was like, like, I really didn't have that much of an opinion on, like, Sua's character, right? Like, she was just there for Suji, you know, the mystery. And when he, when he showed me this, like, my first, my, like, my initial thought in my head was, like, you dumb bitch, like, and pardon the language, but, like, that's what I thought, right? Like, why, like, like, no person can be that selfish that they would, like, kill themselves. But why she even tell her family or her sister, which I was, like, like, holy shit, right? Like, <laughs> Like, but she wouldn't because she wouldn't want to tarnish like anything about like her image, even like the one in front of her family. But that's also that's also like going back to what I was saying though. Like as much as I hate it, that's also another thing in like the music industry itself too. Now, especially for women, it's all about the image and the Holly scene. So like, as much as I hate her character, like this stuff still kind of happens every day in like real life music industry and stuff like that like i read about like i've i've read about like how like certain artists just couldn't make it and they become one hit wonders because of the stress of the industry and stuff so like it's kind of like like it like i hate it but it happens and like so like you know like I, you know, you're just like I see the realism in this but it's just like at the same time i think it's dumb yeah i i guess like i don't know because it doesn't, it doesn't seem like she was stressed. It just kind of seemed like it was like a decision of her own free will because everyone cared about her. But, you know, she herself was just like, I can do the concert. I want to do it. Nothing was tearing her down, per se, that, like, wasn't her health. Yeah, but at the same the time, outside she, factor w- she of was her just, health. she was more worried about, like, her career and everything else, too. But, yeah, like, like I was saying, like, it, it was she, she cares so much about herself but that's like kind of like what i like i said like what i've seen music industry do just, just mess with people <laughs> i mean like before but like before like i'm not to get like really deep or anything but like the, like the greatest example i can get to give is probably like look what happened to like michael jackson like like it, it was more about like him making music and then towards the end of his career it was more about like a, of him upholding an image, and like you know, like he didn't really care about himself like that either. So it's like, it just happens. And it gets to a point where most of them don't. Yeah. Yep. Um. Thankfully, though, uh, Suji herself, more or less, has lived a normal life. Yeah. Has been one of us mere commoners. You know, until these past six months. So, when Shin Hyuk's like, you can have this too. And she's like, I I think it's time we go to the hospital. And it's just like, yeah. Yeah. You smart. (laughs) Well, I mean, like, she heard how stupid her sister was. Right? She was like, oh. And even Shin Hyuk's like, oh my god, it's all my fault. And she's like, no. (laughs) (laughs) She's like, like, I don't know how to comfort you. Because you're like, you're like. Do you really think this is your fault? Though she's like, my sister is pretty dumb. She had that face too. She's like, well, that's how she died. Nice. Like, 
Like, it was like a look of, like, disappointment more than it was sadness when she first initially found out. She was like, oh, that is stupid. Because <laughs> she had such a high opinion of her sister for uh, her entire life. I was just... Oh, she's the successful one. She's the, you know, <laughs> she's so great. She cared but about all of us. It's like, it's like her now, like, look, like, she's like, there's like a scene where she's like sitting on one of those, like, sway, I forget what you call them, like, like benches or something like that, where you can just rock back and forth. She's just literally looking up in the sky, like, did you really die like that? Contemplating, like, like she, so hard. She's like. Did you really die like that? And, and your your and your audience is like, yeah, she really died like that. And she's just like, my sister died like this. Like, holy shit! Like, out of all the ways you could die, you die like this. And it's understandable why Shin Hyuk would blame himself because he was really close to Sua, and he cared, and he, you know, did everything he did just for her. But all it did was drive her away more. Yes, he definitely has the survivor's guilt condition. You know, with like, with everything he sees and all the flashbacks that he has, and, I, and I you know, and how much he blames himself. I will say this: Shin Hook is like, at like he's at like the wrong place at the wrong time. Like, like I just like, like even when it was flashback and the reporter happened to be there, I was like, God, man, like how unlucky do you have to be? Like, like that's like why the gossip came from the first place. I'm like, dang, man. Like, and I'm sure they're going to come out with the truth maybe next episode or something like that. Because I, I don't think this is just going to pass. Oh, you jump, you jump in the line way ahead? Oh, uh, well, uh... What truth? Well, I... Like, uh, like what well, was Sue's death? Because he, oh, he yeah, said... Oh, yeah, the truth he said, the truth Yeah, he said they never reported Sue's death. And... You know, like, obviously, those two... Like, I mean, everyone saw it, so they know that she drove away for some reason. Yeah, they don't but know But everyone suspects sick. that he was doing illegal things to her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And that no one ever knew she was sick. Alright, so I'm like, well, like, obviously, like, I mean, that can't stay bottled up for long. Because, I mean, like, this man has been drinking and taking pills for... He is not the, the the charming producer that all the girls think he is. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's true. But maybe now he can relieve himself of those issues. Because it turns out Suji is perfectly fine. And every time we have seen her be even somewhat remotely ill, it has gone back to that same consistent, my favorite word, excuse of i haven't been sleeping enough but see like that's the thing though right like she hasn't like as she flat out hasn't you'd be like like so they're like all right let's make team outfits she'd be like okay cool stays up to four in the morning right being yeah. like i made her stuff yeah. i say oh someone comes down and they're like been up this whole time what is sleep here's these <laughs> costumes like you know they're like you should get some sleep now nah, let's do the tour like three days of going without no sleep, she falls, stands up. Right, because like, oh, the shit. first, because the first time we noticed it was when she was, you know, practicing during the, uh, the 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 second exercise. Right, spent so much time dancing and what and whatnot, and it's just like you don't get enough sleep. Go home, right? And they did it to tie in to um, fucking Terry's thing, but. Yeah. It just keeps happening. It's just like every time. It's just like we cut to Suji at night. It's always late. She's always doing something. She's always the last one there. She's always the one trying to make sure that everything gets done, you know, picture perfectly. Because, especially now, because she's like the leader, right? Mm -hmm. and, and she, and you know, and she, she has her own pride too, right? She, you know, she's telling everybody she's fine. She's like, don't worry about it. I already know I don't get enough sleep, but it's not that bad until you almost fall unconscious right in front of a car. <laughs> she's like, whoa, why didn't you move? He's like, why didn't you move? So she's like, the lights got me really dizzy. And I was like, man, you really need to go to sleep. Like at that point, someone tells you that the lights like too much for him and was making them dizzy because they sleep deprived like you really need to go to sleep like she she fights sleep a lot like <laughs> yeah like she's like no sleep i will not succumb to you he's like sleep's like come on man you really need this <laughs> you're going to die 
<laughs> right? And, uh, you know, so, like, it's, 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 it's crazy because, I mean, they explained it very quickly, but, you know, when, when Shin Hyuk yells at her, he's like, do you want to die like your sister? And it's just like, what kind of disease relates to getting into car crashes, man? And then you quickly put together that it's he's not talking about the disease at this point. It's evolved to something worse where it's just like, it's Sua's pride that got her killed, plain and simply. Because she could have saved herself, you know, with um, getting the surgery. And, you know, and, and, uh, and Suji's just like, no, 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 no. I don't want to listen to you. I don't want to do this. I need these answers right now. You know, and, and and he's just like, what the fuck is wrong with you? And well, was, and she I puts up like... a fight until, like, she just finally kind of hears what she wants to hear. And then the doctor's like, bitch, you need to go to bed. <laughs> and, like, and then when he said that, you kind of heard a simultaneous, like, around Korea, like a fucking finally. Like, I don't know how to say finally in your language, but it's like, finally. Like, you know, like, like what everyone's been telling her, sleep. And I'm I'm assuming she's gonna go to sleep. Well, actually, kind of now she knows the truth. So it probably made going to sleep harder, if anything. Yeah, I would say it probably made it harder for her to go to sleep. How late was it when she was on that bench all alone? You must really wonder. Oh, yeah, that's true as well. She was in some deep contemplation, like, like, like a lot. Like she was just there. Like, was my sister that dumb? She really do this. She was sad and tears. She was like, no, but like, you know, she was thinking like, my sister cannot be this dumb. And she was. Right, but, uh, so this was good stuff. Plot-wise, it had cleared up a lot of questions. I am extremely satisfied with this answer. Like, this mystery was what has carried the entire show. Because, yes, we've liked the arcs, but, you know, what made the show come together in the first place, you know, was this mystery, right? Like, we wouldn't be telling this story if Shuji didn't show up. And she wanted to find out the truth behind her sister's death. And, you know, within enough time in her character development, you know, whatever the answer was by episode 13, 14-ish, it's mm -hmm. like she had already decided that she was going to stay. But just having these answers, having very good answers, it's satisfactory and, you know, and it puts this humanization on Sua that completely, like, destroys her ideal image, which is good. You know, I'm not saying you need to, like, tarnish her, but she was kind of too perfect for a while. And so, you know, this humanizes her in a good way. And... This development sheds Suji's pride that she has in herself, right? It's just like, you're only human too, god damn it. And... Yeah. Just don't overwork yourself. Well, she has, but... Yeah. I think that's what she was really taking away from this, is just not to, like, overwork herself and to kind of just, like, and in a sense, realizing that it's, it's okay to take it easy. She really hasn't really been doing it that much at all since, like, the whole shows began, so. Yeah, because, I mean, she sucked a lot. Yeah, but least. I but I mean, that's a really cool thing, right? Like, you know, we say we, we say that she overworked herself, which she did, but we also saw, like, how much work and time and effort she put into it. She literally grinded to get better. These results are fantastic. Yeah, yeah, like, she, you know, she put her heart, her soul, her faith, her all to this, like, and... It's been working for her so far, so I mean, like, it's not a bad thing, but at the same time, it's just like, you know... But I think she's mastered the skill enough to yeah, the point to take a break, she yeah. can chill. Um, but, uh... Yeah, so actually, I just wanted to touch on one little thing. We say a lot of dumb shit when we talk about these episodes, but... It amazes me how sometimes we're just, like, so right by accident. <laughs> so it's yeah. just, like, getting up too fast. We 
hammered on this <laughs> that it looked only like she just got up too fast. And now it's like I feel like I'm picturing it behind the <laughs> scenes of the director just giving her her instructions. You know, and he's like, don't worry, in editing, we're going to make it look like you have the sickness. But it's like, but the truth is, is that you, you, this is your sleep deprivation. This is your character. So you kind of need to sort of blend the two in your acting. That is true. But, you know, just 100%. stand up and just pretend you got up too fast. And then we'll sell it like it's, you know, it's like it's your illness. But then when they look back on it, they'll go, ah, right? It's just like the subtlety and the acting on point because the truth really <laughs> was she only just got up too fast. And the other thing that got to me was when they touched on how there was, like, a third person in the hotel room, right? And they're like, this third person. That was, like, what the fucking reporter lady touched on, right? It's like, why would a third person be in this hotel room? And when we, like, learned about, like, Suwa's disease, I was like, like, what what the fuck? Like, who could the third person be? Did they just fucking just bring some doctor and throw him in a hotel room? And then just, like, <laughs> yeah! <laughs> like, that's actually what happened. And I'm just like, ugh. <laughs> like, uh, we are the best. That's what the, don't don't go. Uh, we're like we are the best. That's what it was. We we saw the BS for what it was. We we saw through it, and we were right. That's all that matters, right? Like, it's like what else could it have been if like there wasn't a doctor in the hotel room? But I was like, wait, why would she get any kind of surgery in a hotel room? And then Shady Hook's just like, if you don't want to make it public and you don't want to go to the hospital. We brought this American doctor over, and we can do it right in the room. And I'm, I'm guessing that he has like a fucking just table, and his shit just shit up like right in there. Like, no, that's not, that's not a common actually yeah. for uh, like private practices and private surgeries. So I could, I could totally see it, especially if the doctor specialized in that. You know, he knows what's up. The doctor kind of stressed out that when she was talking to him that it was a pretty simple operation, and just would require her to lose her hair, and she would just have his tube in her hair. So I mean, that's all it really was. So I, I could totally see it. I mean, it could probably be a lot messy too, or yeah, right. Probably, like, probably wouldn't do that. Probably lay out some sheets and uh, stuff. Or like, or, or I just imagine that she actually meets the doctor and they go somewhere private and you know, then they actually do it or something like that. But we won't know because she killed herself. Right. Uh, as shitty as that sounds. Way to go. Right. <laughs> <laughs> now you like really she, did get it before a beautiful concert. Maybe really bad too, because like in the scene, she like storms off into the car and she's driving and it, it like hits her like, oh shit, I'm sick. And it's just like, then she dies. I'm just like, oh. Fucking shin hooks the Terminator, man. It's like, damn near right behind her, like, the whole time. Even while watching the car crash running from the hotel. That was like the one thing. It's like, she's like, driving away, and he's just like, hoo, 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 hoo. All right, like, and he's like, so, uh, I'm like, god damn. He's, like, fucking, he's fucking Black Panther keeping up yeah, with fucking like, Winter Soldier on the well, fucking like, morning. Like, like, you're, you're, like, <laughs> questioning yourself, like, are you going to breathe for air? Like, like, <laughs> are you tired? Do you chase after cars? Like... <laughs> On your free time, like you're not like you're not out of breath. You're, you're like he he was doing this like he was like used to it or something like that, man. He's cutting those corners. It's like dang, this man like can run <laughs> just as fast as a car. Damn it, that's that's kind of he had like the Tom Cruise run going. Yeah, I know, right? Like I was like, dang, man. No, I, I kind of thought it was like the Get Out, like you know, the black man. Like the, <laughs> that's all I was thinking. I was just I was like, man, he is like where he is going behind her. He wants her to live. I'm like, dang. Kind of cheering for him too, a little bit like, yeah, you know, you catch her in that car going 55 miles per hour. <laughs> totally. I wanted to see this. I did want to see this because he was almost there. But sadly, we watched episode one, so we knew how it would turn out. And she swerved. <laughs> She's like, I can't let him catch me. Backed up traffic. No, I will beat this truck. <laughs> So, we can move on. Yeah, I mean, cause, I mean, this was this is majority of the episode, kind of. Yeah, I mean, for the most part, this is majority of the episode. It was a lot of talking in that yeah, car. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, alright, so, like, moving on. But it was on, good conversation. Yeah. Moving on in the, from, like, the whole ordeal, Shin Hook starts crying. <laughs> he, uh, he thinks it's his fault, whatever. Suji is kind of, like, doing the there, there to him. It cute, kind of, cute. seems like it's kind of awkward for her, and she doesn't yeah. really like. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really like, awkward. It's, what, it's just like, what, what do I 
do. Yeah, yeah. Like she, she doesn't want to give him a hug or anything because it's not like that, right? But if someone saw this, it could be, it could spell wrong. Well, she, I, really, I don't think that was going through her mind at all. It's just, it kind of. I, really I understand, like, like they're not that close. Yeah. It, it, so I was like, but it's also like that strong male figure, like whatever it is. Like, when you see him crying, it's always awkward, right? It just is. Right. He's he's been like you know. Yeah, like, yeah, like I don't know what I'll say. He's just been tough for the entire yeah, time. Yeah, like, right? when you see like when you like even like in real life or like cartoons, like you see like the toughest character kind of like start crying. You either a feel really really sad and cry with them, or b you just feel really really awkward because you've never seen this person break down before. And it was kind of a mix of both. She saw where he was coming from, and at the same time, she's just never seen him cry. So she's like, "What do I do?" So she gave him uh she gave him the awkward like kind of hover hand ish like she was her one hand was definitely on the shoulder but the other one was kind of like there for support mm-hmm. so i mean like it was fine but then you cue in uh yukika and young Ju looking for suji <laughs> which that which also leads to some like really funny stuff because uh it also cues in um the stalker who is still there and i'm gonna stop you for just a second right okay so, here's the thing I feel like I need to take back. It was because I had talked about before how, like, every character in this show sort of, like, fills a role, right? And I thought to myself, that's just like, man, like, the original Idol Nasher never had a stalker in it, though. But, like, what completely went over my head for so long was that the original Idol Nasher anime did have a paparazzi guy in it, though. And this was sort of like a similar situation because that guy... Where his assignment was to follow Takane the entire time, and his big scoop ended up being something completely different by ruining Jihaya's life. This guy is like kind of similar, where it's like it's not his assignment, but he's stalking Yukika the entire time, and then his big scoop ends up being something completely different, where he's ruining Suji's life. And yeah. I was like, hmm. That's, it's really <laughs> funny because, right, like Yukika is like, oh, maybe Suji wants to go get something to eat because, you know, she slept through everything. I'm just like, nah. So they like they turn a corner, and cue in stalker guy, and stalker guy is like, oh shit, <laughs> like he, he sees them, they don't see him, so he runs into like the bus stop. That's what it was. It was like yeah, it was, it was a bus, bus stop. stop. Yeah, he's trying to hide himself or whatever. They turn the corner to Young Juicy Suji and uh, you know Shin Hook in the car. She just can't really see fully what's going on. It's just kind of like like Suji doing like awkward hand thing. And Young Ju turns around like, okay, this is none of our business. Right? It's like the one thing I respond. I I'm like, glad you like really didn't really want Yukika to see either because whatever her motivation may have been. Oh, she said it. Just, just as, just like us as an audience or like even just myself and having my opinion. And we know that Yukika's a complete fucking blepper mouth. But... Yeah, yeah. She turned around. She was like, you can't keep a secret anyway. Let's go get some food. <laughs> yeah, like, you know, cool. And like the stalker guy sees with Young Ju's looking. He's like, what are you looking Oh, and he, you know, he's just click, 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 and then all the next thing you know, it's just like Suji and Shin. This will make my career. Right. My boss will right. love me. I mean, which he really was, because he was probably about to get fired. Mm-hmm. But I mean, like, I mean, it cues in the, the reports and stories that Shin Hook is dating Suji, and you know all this. Because you know the hospital is like the hottest dating spot ever. Right. So I mean, like, you know, <laughs> you know, it causes a lot of drama there. I mean. I mean, obviously, right? Because, you know, Sua, you know... I only already... say that in relation to, like, those who were, like, in the hospital itself. Yeah. Watching them, like, you know, come out from, like, where all the actual, like, doctor's rooms are just into, like, the main office. And everyone's like, oh my god, are they dating? And I'm just like, I, I would hope you could put some context clues together. Same goes for Youngju. It's like, when you see, like, these, like, two people be really, really miserable, but you're, like, still suspicious of them, I'm just like, girl... Like, how little faith do you still have in people? Because apparently not very much. So, I don't know, because originally I got, like, she just didn't want to question it. Like, she was like, okay, there's a time and a place, and now it's not now. Uh, The time's not now. And I'm like, okay, cool. Right? That's what I would have done, too. Right? Like, I wouldn't question it. You know, I I don't know. I wouldn't have touched on it either. I would have left it alone. Yeah. Like, I wouldn't ask questions. That looks like something that just isn't me. And at the same time... When I heard the rumors, this is just me personally, I, I wouldn't have believed anything because, you know, like, until there's proof 
or until someone says something, I'm not one to just jump the gun. And but I mean, like they rightfully so they jump the gun though. Like when they when they was like when they when the girls found out, they were like, yeah, this makes sense. Blah 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 blah. You know, this was for her, and like I was like, I can see where you guys are coming from because she's always talking to like Shin Hook, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And also like you know, it always seemed like she got more attention out of most of the girls anyway. But it was totally never like that. <laughs> but just just from the perspective of not knowing, you can right. There was where context from. Yeah. to that, right? Because of course, not everyone sees it, but we as an audience, yeah, know a lot of things, right? Like we know why like Suji and him talked so much and why they're the closest, right? And it's it really was for no other reason than just for him to be her support because that's just what his job is and he wants her to be successful and you know and he wants her to more or less kind of you know be like a representative almost i guess of just like how you can kind of change things you know how like what this style of like the new unit he wants it to be because what it got me back to thinking was like when his fucking dude, who his friend who, like, makes the music for him, right? Mm-hmm. This guy was like, oh, man, they're kind of amateurish, but just imagine their potential when you ha- when you turn Suji into Sua, and, you know, and they start going on to turning into the next Red Queen. And he's like, I'm going to stop you right there, because I have seen what trying to be Red Queen turns into people. We didn't know that at the time, but it's like, now we know where he's coming from, when he's just like, it's not about the image. It's not about being forgotten. That's what Suo was afraid of. It is all about. I don't. I don't know how to put it, but you know, he just wanted a group that can be remembered. He didn't want a group that that was such a tool, I guess. You know, and so it's like he wanted something unique. Yeah. Right. Precisely. And and that's like what Red Queen wasn't and he by all means wasn't gonna make a second one and you know we've seen what he's done for the group as a whole right yeah because I... I mean people thought that this competition started to split them up because they kind of argued amongst themselves I was... but he's really done it to encourage the teamwork amongst them and he's kind of implied it before but just no one's gotten it yet you know Especially the time when, like, Youngju was yelling about him, about, like, you know, just, like, why didn't we win? And he's just, like, if you're asking this question, then you're still not getting the point. And, you know, so, like, the competition was for them. He fought tooth and nail to get Dream, because, like, that was supposed to be their song, you know? He's, like, it's big enough, and and, and the sound's just right, and, 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 and all these things. And, and he wasn't going to settle for less, because he was doing it. For the group, right? As a whole. And then, like, yeah, I guess as far as my note goes, then, you know, what I said already, assembling them to be remembered, yeah. doesn't want them to, like, have the same kind of pride in themselves like Sula did. Yeah, no, yeah. I mean, there's multiple ways to go around it, and it's shown right now. He, he said that he, he feels having the team become zeros to heroes is probably the best way to make them stand out more because people grow with them. And but that that's a formula that's always worked in character development. Um uh, we talked about this in the car. Um we talked about Assassin's Creed. Right? Everyone hates three. <laughs> more or less the ending to three. Yeah, more or less the ending to three, but well it was, but it, ending, it, was and, it was really buggy. And the endings can do a lot to ruin a game. Yeah. But uh Mass Effect being the worst. Yeah. But people really, really love Assassin's Creed 2. And the main reason is because you literally play as Ezio through his whole life. Like, you you grow to like him. Like you grow No one gives a fuck him. about Altair, for example, yeah. because while he was, like, the starting character, he was already the best, and he didn't have much of a personality. That's right. Yeah, that's true. If you're like, like, unless you're like me who read the book, like, I was like, when I, when I first played the first Assassin's Creed game, I loved it. I was like, oh, this is amazing when I was in high school. Only thing that bothered me was, like, there was no ever, or no ever enough, like, fast travel, so I had to do everything. I was like, this sucks. Everything on horseback. Yeah, I was like, I don't want to fucking ride a horse for, like, 20 minutes, but... 
Bloxy is actually amazing, but going off, going back to the track, like, uh, like Altair, uh, you know, no one, yeah, everyone's like, eh, but Etsy, everyone loves, like, even to this day, if you ask people what's their favorite Assassin's Creed, they will tell you one of the games that took place in that Assassin's Creed 2. Right? Mainly 2 and Brother. Yeah. 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 I, I thought, I heard Revelations was a pretty solid ending for his story. I didn't, I didn't hear any bad things about it. I didn't play after Brotherhood, so. Uh, uh, Revelations was like Altair and Ezio's story, which I heard was done really good. I'd have to play it, but but everyone likes Altair, but simple because you grew up with them, and that formula works, right? That's why Superman's so liked too. Like when they rewrote Superman's story in like the '60s, and like you grew up, you grew to him being Superman, or even looking at Smallville, right? Yeah, like. It, like you, you appreciate Superman more because like you, you grew up with the character and growing up with the team here. That's and I mean, small those iteration of Superman is still my favorite. Oh yeah, by all means, I still like the cast. I still like it. I like the intro. <laughs> Say uh, right, like, um, but like growing, growing with these people when they're nothing to something, like it makes you feel like you've been a part of the journey, and it's probably the smartest thing you probably could do even now, honestly. Something like this would probably work really well in real life. Yeah, and I guess a part of that zero to hero effect is, you know, the the audience within the show seeing the growth for themselves. Yeah. Just how, like, what Real Girl Project is in real life, where it's like they... The whole concept behind that entire unit is to, like, actually just, like, break the uh that wall between like an audience and the idol group it's it's a crazy thing and but you know it happened during the uh the worldwide broadcast center event thing fucking uh i felt like it worked you know yeah like it worked but if you watch like these behind the scene videos right and you know and they talked about them and like how like they're blending these elements of fiction and reality to make the audience feel closer to these girls and then you watch their YouTube channel and you, you know, just watch all these vlogs and all the events that they go to and you see all this stuff and I feel even kind of special because every single video is English subtitled, you know, so it's like you can get really, really attached, especially, you know, when it, it's like this surprise camera shit because it's like, oh, I caught you without your makeup on and I, I caught you sleeping and it's... You know, and I caught you doing some fucking really weird, bizarre shit. <laughs> like that's, that's true. Some, some like pretty bizarre stuff. Like, like yeah, right. Like when fucking in, when you in one of the videos, like Yuki Kill was like talking in front of it, and then in the background, fucking you was just like hauling ass from like one end of the room to the other, just going ee, <laughs> and like no one knows what the fuck she was doing. Like even the caption like on the video was just like, "What are you doing?" <laughs> right? But you don't get an answer. She's just being crazy because she's fun. You know, and it's. And, you know, it, we don't get that in depth, per se, because, I mean, or should I say, like, I don't think the audience in the show is getting that much in depth, because all they're doing is just watching just these recordings of the performances themselves. They're not seeing this behind-the-scenes stuff and anything like that, but well, there the is... closeness is there, because yeah. this is a genuine online competition. <laughs> Sorry, so much water I just drank. Um, you know, this online competition in... And you just see it all. You see the changes. You and and all that kind of stuff. And yeah, because like they did. And it shows. Up. Yeah, it shows in their products, and it shows in their improvement. And you know, of course, you know we were right that of course the rookie team video had to win because it was just full of so much genuine love that the audience was gonna feel it too, and they did. We do. I mean, we didn't get to see the votes. Yeah, but they they just kind of dropped it out there as if like they already knew, which maybe um maybe like that's how like Shin Hyuk was just like you'll do the final event later. It's just like isn't that spoiling that the fact that the rookie team already won? Yeah, I, maybe I, maybe I, something I, that got missed in the dialogue, but it still makes sense. Yeah, as I felt like going in that the baby team wasn't gonna win with this either, and when they did, and I'm just like. But we went over that last yeah. episode because yeah. that video was just meant for Yi Yoon and yeah, it, yeah. It, we already knew yeah. that that the 
the audience wasn't going to feel it as much as it was meant for the girls themselves. That's true. Yeah. Um. Oh yeah. Well, I guess you just kind of want to wrap it up because I feel like we kind of brushed over. Uh. Everything. For the for the most part, yeah. Um. There. Is... I like. I just want to say that it's. There is an overall theme with this show that's finally being brought to the fore. Like it was always kind of present, but it's uh, but it's like being completely brought to the forefront now that the show's starting to wrap up with the last few episodes. And it's and it's uh, like what the show. I just like I just know it, right? It's like cause, because of how much we're seeing of it, but like the show just wants. More than anything, I feel like it wants you to take away the idea of perception, essentially, you know, and and it's and it's and it's done it in some creative ways, because like the last big thing was people expecting that uh, G Wan, mm -hmm. yeah, All right, name started to escape me, uh, you know that the G Wan took the stuff, right? But she didn't, and, you know, that's everyone, like, that's everyone just kind of just, like, picking an enemy and, like, directing all the hate on her, and then, and then, you know, this is a, a similar situation, but kind of different circumstances, once again, where you can kind of apply the same thing, where it's just, like, just uh, based on a rumor, like, you're, you're, you're going to fall for this, like, is... Has this, has these past six months really meant so little to all of you that still you don't have enough faith to trust each other? Because wow. Shin Hyuk and Mr. Shim, they have this conversation, right? And Shin Hyuk just goes to him and he's like, I cannot tell you what happened. I just need you to believe me. And Mr. Shim says, okay. And Shuji goes to the rest of the girls, and she's like, I cannot tell you what happened. And for the record, like, they don't want to tell anyone what happened because it just makes Sua look dumb, right? And the, such like the agreement is, like, we, we're not going to do that, right? It's, well, it's, I, I, like I said, it's, like, it's I not, kinda, we're, not, we're not going to ruin her memory, right? I kind of I feel like, like, I kind of feel like they're going to tell someone, or some, something's going to happen. See, the thing is, I don't want them to break to the pressure... But if they do, I feel like the show is still going to do it in such a good way because it hasn't disappointed me yet. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I, cause I've, I've had my dream shattered multiple times where I want the show to go and then it doesn't happen. And I'm just like, thank God it didn't because clearly I'm not as skilled of a writer as whoever's actually doing this show because it's so damn good. <laughs> uh, but, um, but anyways, yeah, so like... Suji goes to them, and she says the same thing, and she's like, I cannot tell you what happened. I just need you to believe me that we're not dating. And they're like, no. Well, the only the only person, the only person... And it's the adults who stand up, and they say well, like, hold on, hold on. There's, what there's, I said right before, right? Just like, what the fuck? There's only one girl in there who's, who's like, that's Jisoo. She was like, if they're dating, so what? She, said, she openly said that, right? She's just like, if they're dating... What does that have to do with us? Like, Jisoo, honest, and that, that's how I felt, too. If they were dating, why does it matter? And that's, like, how Jisoo was, like... And Jisoo's the biggest realist of them all. Like, like she's, like, the perfect definition of a realist, right? right? Which is, she's like, I need to make money, so I'm gonna go do all these things. You know, and, you know, and stuff like that. And, you know, and, and she's, like, and people are, like, so mad, right? It's just, like, whether they believe that they're dating, you know... And thinking that he's just doing it to replace Sua with Suji, or whether they think, you know, that they're just all here to make Suji's image better. Like, it doesn't matter to them, right? Because they're just like, we're mad because you don't care about us. And then Jisoo is just like, but we've come this far. We're about to debut. I don't know why you're all mad. Uh, she was but like, when she said that, I was just like, Right on. Right, and then, and then there's the people who you expect, you know, to to not jump the gun so much. So where he's like, whoa, wait, let's just all just calm down and think about it. Yi Yoon being Suji's best friend, she's being like, I'm willing to believe her, but the majority of them don't. 
Yeah, they're, it, was like, it was like they're World getting War offensive. III. It was like World War Three. It it essentially was exactly like World War Three. And just like say something, blah, 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 blah. And, like... and the adults who are mature enough and can trust one another and are only worried about getting through this don't want to deal with this melodramatic bullshit that these girls are about to start because they're so wrapped up in their images, basically. You know, it's actually really funny. Um, like this may come out wrong, but like. I felt like if, like, if, like, the roles are reversed, and, like, these were, like, guys, and, like, the female, there was, like, a female producer who got caught, I feel like the guys really wouldn't, <laughs> wouldn't care as much, they would just be, like, nice. Like, 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 a, like I, I feel like they really wouldn't be. I mean, just from my group male experiences, yeah. <laughs> Right, right. It'd be like, hey, like it wouldn't be like a like, oh, blah, blah. It'd just be like. I mean, when you join the army, there's all kinds of womanizing stories that you're gonna hear. Some even that don't even make me particularly comfortable. I believe it. Yeah. But as far as thinking about them, like, man, like if this is reverse, would that really be that big of a deal? Like, man, because I don't think guys hold on to drama like that at all. We don't. Yeah, and we... even if you're mad, you punch each other once and you get over it. <laughs> Best friends after that. Why? I kicked his ass. He's like, yeah, it's true. Uh, um, I guess... So, kind of so, so, yeah, so, like, that's it, right? Just this whole perception of truth. Um, Well, kind of finding truth on top of, like, how you perceive things and putting blind faith in other people. It's... Yeah, they, they have no blind. <laughs> yeah, it's... Uh, we're gonna have to see what comes about. Uh, that. there is a the really funny thing too is uh, I, I think how it ends is the funniest way. It's like they're all like all the girls are walking together, even with Suji. You know, some of them kind the of day, still, the day's over. I mean, yeah. there's nothing else you can really do. So they, just they go still kind of they still kind of look down and you just. <laughs> and Hasuka's granddad's there to uh, ruin no, the mood. Like he just grabs her, like just like he almost actually kind of like, elevates the mood. Like, <laughs> just grabs her like by her arm, just kind of like this. You just see it out of frame. Like they're just walking. She just get grabbed. He's like Hasuka, <laughs> and has like the TBC. <laughs> like she's like, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was so funny because they're just walking right. Like the JoJo themes do 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 do. Like oh shit. Like it's kind of funny. This was like the first time where like the ending theme didn't make me mad because like I said. Like, her granddad just jumping in out of nowhere actually did kind of elevate the mood. And because he's just such a comedic character, it's 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 like he does kind of piss you off just because of, like, his, like, old ways. But he's just so over the top about it that it's just, like, yeah, it's just, like, once he just does dump on the screen and then he's just, like, munching at the camera, just like, Hasio, I found you! Ah! You know, it's just, like, and then, like, the light theme song plays and it's just, like, for once, that didn't make me mad. <laughs> like, <laughs> like that felt appropriate. It's just so funny, because there's, like, there's so many ways you could just say, oh, shit. But, like, the expression that Hasio has given, like, every time, it's just always just, like, different. But it also just says, oh, shit. Like, the sheer look of fear, like, on her face. You know? It's, it's actually really funny. It's funny, because we said, like, how is he going to catch her if he's so old? Apparently, it's a surprise attack. That, that's true. That's true. <laughs> All right. Unprepared. She was. They were just walking. He's like, gotcha, bitch. <laughs> exactly. There was like, ah! Like, she can't run. She can't All the worst arm. things happen when they're the most unexpected. True. That is another thing we've taken away from this episode. Yeah. I mean, uh, well, I, I guess that's kind of it. Because, I mean, that's the episode in a nutshell. Yeah, I guess we're going to open up next week on uh, Hasio's granddad and see where that goes while hopefully, while hopefully. while everyone else is still just kind of trying to hopefully, calm down. Hopefully, it's it's on a much lighter note because this episode was pretty depressing. It was heavy. It's heavy, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, it's just it was just, it was it was super super depressing. Uh, but I feel like it'd probably be funnier next week. Um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much it for this episode's review, uh, analysis, whatever we call it. <laughs> I say reviews in the videos and put analysis in the title. Yeah. It's all the same thing. Yeah. But, Kai. I'm Drake. And we'll be signing off until next time. Peace. Peace.